You know, I, I, I could never play through that song before I got my Jackson. <laughs> No, uh, we again, we want to thank Jackson for uh, putting this together for us. It's been awesome. You know, I've learned a lot from uh, Dave in a lot of ways, not only uh, on these clinic tours, but also, you know, throughout the years that we played together, and it's been awesome. Um, these Jacksons are awesome in my mind, and I'll tell you why. The big thing for me is that Jackson was always experimenting. You know, the, we built this guitar from the ground up, but the things that they're working on, even outside of this guitar, blow my mind. You know, things, dual truss rods, triple humbuckers, all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff, you know. But uh, I, I tried to stick a little bit more traditional, but, uh, you know, when we built this guitar, it was everything that I wanted, and there were no no's. You know, there was no, oh, you can't have your stainless steel frets, you can't have that radius of a fretboard. They, they were just like, yeah, sure, we can do that. And then when Shannon and I, Mike Shannon, uh, who you guys might know, I don't know if you guys are into luthiers or not, but he's a very, very good builder, and he's built for Jackson since Randy Rhodes. And so, at any rate, we got together and uh, we put all kinds of cool things together on this guitar, from you know the shape of the body to the tone controls. Uh, an exclusive on this seven string is actually the Floyd Pro version of their tremolo, which no other seven string can get. And Jackson actually put that together for me too. They were like, oh, do you want us to call Floyd? And I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't think I could get one. And, and uh, I always loved the, the pros versus the, the originals. So that was awesome for me. And uh, got the Planet Waves tuners and the Killer DiMarzio pickups. I can't say enough about this guitar, let alone Jackson and what they've done for me and my playing. Because yeah. now I can play through Holy Wars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Megadeth music was meant to be played on a Jackson, I think. You know? Yeah. Right? Um, and you know, I, um, it's funny, when, I, when we did the, uh, the Rust in Peace tour last year, you know, I had a, a lot of different gear and I started playing through stuff. And it's funny, there was a guy that worked at uh, Brian McDonald's, his name worked at Jackson for a lot of years. And they're right down the street from me in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he kept telling me, he kept goes, dude, it, whenever you're ready to do a Jackson bass, he goes, even though you haven't played our, our stuff in a couple of years because it, you know, it wasn't negative for a few years and stuff and he said he goes man You still sell more basses for us than anybody else, you know, and uh, and because he was just a big fan and and you know, It's ironic, you know Just as a, as a fan of music myself, you know I me and Marty Friedman sat second row when the kiss reunion happened, you know So nice. we're big fans and and obviously coming back in and doing the big rust and peace tour you know, for me, it had needed to have the look, sound, and feel of that Rust in Peace record, and that was all done on Jackson basses. And what's cool is that, like Chris had said, Jackson is moving forward in some great technology and great innovations and new things that really help me and Chris, especially as we're, you know, not only having to go back, you know, for me playing my own bass lines, but Chris having to go back and learn other, you know, other members' parts, but then also as we're creating and writing new records, you know, and coming up with new music, you know, it's cool to have stuff that can recreate the past, but stuff that can help us innovate and create new music. And, you know, I, um, Jackson, actually, like within a month, put together like four instruments for me to play. And actually that Rust in Peace Live DVD that we did up at the Palladium, um, that's, uh, th those two basses, I actually, they brought them to me at Soundcheck, I plugged them in, and I usually never play just a professional role. When you get new stuff, don't play it that night, right? <laughs> I violated my own rule and I played those basses that night and I'm so glad I did because they sounded great when we were listening to the mixes and they look cool again they look and they sound and that whole thing is complete and it's kind of funny because the five string bass a quick little story on this Jackson did not make a five string bass and we were in Mike Clink and I were actually recording the bass parts for Rust in Peace and um, and we'd been writing it but I, I was always kind of playing it it's, you know, it's up in D and, and I needed to uh, you know we went around town, around L.A. to a few music stores, started to find a bass, and, and, and none of it sounded like what we'd already recorded with the Jackson. So I did the, uh, the poor man's five string, and I tuned the E string down a whole step, right? So I could get it down, and then we recorded the front half of the tune, and then when we had that done, I tuned it back up, and we recorded the... You know, and carried on with the rest of the tune. Then I went, oh my God, we gotta go tour and I gotta play this song. And uh, so I called Jackson and I think, believe probably Mike Shannon because he made, uh, I think he probably made me and Dave's first Jacksons and then he made a lot of different basses for me, kind of made like this Thunderbird shape that, that we did at one point, which is actually what the Kelly Bird is morphed into. But he, um, I believe he or at least his team put together the first Jackson five string bass. 
And uh, and we and back in those days, man, we didn't have like we got these badass bridges and these really cool EMGs and things that are really meant for a five string because it's 20 years later and we figured out how to make five strings. But back in those days, we were taking four string parts and basically widening the pickups out like a split P bass. You know, we're kind of widening them out, having to find like funky bridges from anywhere who had them, you know, then just and slap them on there so I could get on tour and play Hangar 18 basically. And, um, and they didn't even go into production with it for a long time. But so, you know, these, these bases here really for me, these are uh, up to the large part created uh, based on those those bases from like 20 some years ago, but hybrided with the real parts now that really make a true five string. And, and the necks are a little wider, they're crafted great, and, and me and Chris's stuff, all the stuff you see up here is all stuff that's made just right up in Corona in the custom shop. So uh, these are the real deal, and um, you know, I, I've actually been showing up, not even bringing my own base to these clinics, because I want to make sure that the stuff I can pull off the wall that they, the Jackson sends to Guitar Trader, I want to make sure that it's what I would play, you know? And, and so far, everything, yeah. <laughs> and it's the real deal, right? It. Yeah, it's not just a facade, it's the real thing. So, uh, so it's, it's, been, it's really been a cool thing. And what's funny, because I was getting in, you know, kind of getting grooving on the Jackson thing, and partway through the tour last year, I went over to Chris and said, so what are you, you know, what are you thinking for a guitar? Because he was playing another manufacturer's <laughs> instrument. And, uh, and he goes, you know, I'm really liking the Jackson thing. I'm like, really? I didn't, you know, I was talking to Jackson all the time, and I didn't even know that you were developing what would uh, become your own guitar. Yeah, totally independent, actually. We, uh, yeah. we kind of arrived at Jackson <clears throat> through two different paths. And, uh, yeah, so it was, it was a bit surprising for me, too. And they said, hey, we can do clinics with these two guys, right? They yeah. probably know the same songs. Right? <laughs> and, you know, another funny thing is if you look at how Jackson treated both of us, it's very different. You know, they were able to accommodate, you know, he wanted to go back to that sound that Rust in Peace had and, and go back and revisit the bass that made that, that CD. Mm -hmm. And then I designed something totally new from the ground up, and they were able to pull it off. So. And we both win on that. So, so thank you, Jackson. Awesome. Yeah.